Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. It is the early morning hours here. I am pre-recording today's show because I am getting ready to leave for the airport to head to the Federation of Genealogical Society's annual conference in Fort Wayne, Indiana. All that means is just that this is a pre-recorded show today instead of live and that I will not be available on chat immediately following the presentation. However, um, feel free to chat amongst yourselves and there are quite a few knowledgeable people, especially about Family Tree Maker in our community. So today we're talking about Family Tree Maker media. Um, not a whole lot to cover. Uh, it's pretty basic, but there have been several requests for me just to go over a few things, and so that's what we're going to do. Let's dive into that. First of all, let me just review with you a couple of quick things about how media works, both in Family Tree Maker and in your online tree. Um, you can upload lots of different kinds of media, any kind of an image file or digital images of documents. So it's not just pictures, but um, any certificates or um, in my case, I've got some military photos or some letters that I have scanned and created digital images out of. You can also upload stories, either as a doc file or as a PDF file. Um, you can also upload um, any kind of a text file. So those are just some of the basic kinds of media that you can upload to your tree. Now, how do you upload media? Let's just cover that really quickly. You can upload media in large groups of media at once and then attach it to your people, or you can upload media one person at a time. So let me go ahead and go into Family Tree Maker and just show you um, a couple of places where you can work with your media. The first place you can work with your media is just right here on the family screen. You have your, I've got my person selected here. This is my third great grandmother. I have her selected here in my tree. You can see then that this panel over here is her. And there's a little icon here for media. I can click on that and it shows me all of the media that I have attached for her. So in this case, it looks like um, some census records, a, a death index, and a photo. So these are the specific pieces of media that I have attached to her um, because I'm looking at her information. I can click then on this new media button and then I can go into my photos and I can see if I have any additional, um, if I've scanned an additional photo or something, I can add that just one photo to her. Okay, I can click on it and, and click open and it will attach it. The second place to work with your media is in the media tab up here on the toolbar. So I can go ahead and click on media here and then if I want to add new media I can add it in bulk meaning I can just take chunks of pictures or photos or digital images and if I, and I'm on a PC but if I hold down the shift key and just click however many of these photos I want um, I can do them in large groups like that, or if I hold down the control key, I can select random of, you know, like they don't have to be sequential, right? So I can click here, and then I can click here and here. So that allows me to, to upload multiple photos at a time. So I can do them one at a time, or I can do them in large groups at a time. That's really important if you've just finished scanning a whole bunch of things and you want to make sure that they attach correctly, or that you get them all uploaded at once and then go through and, and um, deal with the metadata. It's up to you how you do that, but that's kind of the process. Um, add new media through either the person page or the media page. When you're on the person page, you have the option also to have a profile picture, and you can upload media that way. So if I select um, here, there's this profile picture space, and when I click on it, it gives me the option to add a new picture or link to an existing picture. And here's, I think, one of those places where sometimes we get a little bit confused and, and um, maybe cause some unnecessary work for ourselves and some unnecessary duplication. If you already have the picture attached to the person here, or if the photo is already in your media gallery, even if it's not attached to this person, but it's in the media gallery, you want to select link to existing picture. Otherwise, what you're gonna be doing is uploading multiple copies of the same picture. I hope that that makes sense. So if the picture is already here attached to the person or already exists in your media gallery, then you just wanna to link to an existing picture. 
If it's not, that's when you want to add a new picture, go out and find where you've stored it on your computer and import it that way. Okay. Um, you then have the option after you've uploaded that media to add captions and dates and descriptions and categories, which is the real focus of today's today's topic. So when I'm looking at any image, if I if I double click on it, it'll open up a media detail screen. I can then up here provide a caption. So in this case, it just has taken the name of the file, whatever I named the media file, and it has given that the caption. But I can then actually make that, I can change that, and it doesn't change the name of the file, it just puts in a specific caption. I can then put in a date. So for example, this is my third great grandmother. Um, she, you know, I, I have some information about her, so I can estimate that this picture, you know, was taken in about 1890. I'm not exactly sure. I could then write some further detail here if I have more information about the photo. If there are multiple people in the photo and I want to make sure I've, I know who everybody is, um, this is the space where I can do that. And then right here is the category field. And that's where you're going to categorize this piece of media. Now there's some basic default categories that come with Family Tree Maker. Um, those are things like a birth record, a death record, a photo. Um, you can also add categories if you want to get a little bit more granular or more specific. And I've done that with a few things here like image tag. I think I added the category group and person and I'll show you why here in just a minute. But this is where you're going to add your media detail. Again, you get there by just double clicking on any image you have here. So in this case, this is a uh, photo that I have uploaded to her. Um, in the case of one of these census records, you'll see it's actually a record that has been, that I've attached and that's been imported from my online tree when I sync. So you'll see here, again, the caption's already been created based on the name of the file. The description information has been filled in for me. It's based on some of the source information for that document that I attached. The date listed here is actually the date that I attached it. Now I can change that date to the date of the census if that makes more sense for me. Um, and in most cases I would do that. Then again here I can edit the category and in this case I'm going to select census and click OK and now I've categorized this piece of media. So that's how you work with some of that media detail after you upload it to your online tree. Now let's just talk about managing some of this media here. Um, spend some time with your media gallery. Um, review it for duplicate images. Uh, again, sometimes we, in our haste or in our eagerness, we, we create duplicate and that overinflates the size of our database. So you can actually go through and review and see if you've got duplicate media in there and then you can eliminate some of those duplicates. Um, you can attach a single image to multiple people and so you don't have to have, um, for example, a census in there. Every, you, know, you don't have to have multiple copies of the census image in there for every person in your family listed on that census. Same thing with a photo. You don't have to have multiple copies of a photo just because it's a group photo. Single image attached to multiple people. Um, also, you're going to want to review and see that any single piece of media is attached to all the appropriate people in your tree. So when I come in here and I view this image, um, I need to make sure that it's attached to all the appropriate people. Um, and so there's some media um, usage details. So if you right click on any one of these images, you're going to get some additional options. And one of those is view media details, which is what we've just been looking at. One of those is view media usage. And here you can see the only person I have this image attached to is Mary Euphemia Starrett. Well, that's because it's a, obviously because it's a single photo. But if this was a group photo, there would be hopefully multiple people listed here. So I could make sure that it was attached to all the appropriate people. Now, I can do some of those same things here from my media gallery. 
Let's spend the rest of our time here looking at this media gallery. So here, just at a quick glance, I can see I actually have two copies of this photo down here. And so if I want to delete one of them, the best thing to do would be to check and see what the media usage um, is for that particular file. Who's it attached to? So I come over here, and in this case, there's a little icon over here to do that. Here it's attached to my grandmother and my grandfather. If I click here, it's also attached to my grandmother and my grandfather. So I can delete one of those and, be, and know that it's attached to the appropriate people. Scroll back up here to the top here. Um, the default when you're looking at your media gallery is all media, but one of the things I want you to start to get familiar with is this media category. Again, what it allows me to do is it allows me to categorize media by type so that I can see what I have and what I don't have. Now, I don't have a whole lot of media. I'm only up to about 600 and something um, media items, but as you start attaching censuses and photos and uploading documents that you've scanned, that number is going to grow very quickly, and it would be really easy to get overwhelmed, and so categorizing media for me is a way to just keep track of what I've got and what I don't. Um, there is an uncategorized category here when you're viewing it this way. What that does is it tells me which of my media I have not yet categorized, and you can see here there's quite a bit of it. So I'm going to come in here and let's just start with this one for example. This is a photo of my great grandmother and her siblings. Um, I believe it was at the funeral of her father. Again, I can add or update the caption. The caption is derived from the file name, but I can change that. I can add a date for the photo, and in this case, um, I know the date of that photo, so I probably want to go ahead and add that. I can add a description. So for example, what I just told you, um, this photo is of all you know, nine of the children of, right? And I could add whatever additional information I want to about that photo, especially if you know a story or some history behind it. That's a really great place to put that information. I can then edit categories. Now in this case, this is a photo, so I'm gonna mark photo but I'm also going to mark group. And that's a category that I added. Um, as I started adding more and more photos, I realized some of them were portraits of single individuals um, or a person, and some of them were group photos or group shots. Some of them are photographs of houses. Um, and so I've added a few categories here so that I can categorize things in multiple ways. So now I've got a category for photo for person, and then I've also got a, a category for photos for groups. So they'll show up in both categories. I hope that makes, makes sense. For me, it's just another way or another tool for me to keep track of what I have. And now I can go through and I can categorize any number um, of these uncategorized things. There's a census record, and you'll notice as soon as I categorize it, it disappears because remember, I'm in the uncategorized category. Um, and so as I as I categorize these, they're removed from this list and placed in their appropriate category. Again, you can further, you can create whatever categories you want. Um, do it so that it makes sense to you, but it's just a way for you to filter through your categories. It's a way for you to sort them, to be able to find things quickly. Um, Media category is one way to do it. You can also um, do it by source title, which actually any record that's attached to a source document, um, so for example, an 1800 census or an 1810 census, you can click through and it will show you what you've got for that year. You can also do it by person. So here is the full list of everybody in my tree. And you know, if I happen to know that I have documents attached to one of the people in my tree, I can jump directly to that person and see all of the media for that individual. So um, lots of different ways to categorize your media, to sort through it, to make sure that you have what you need, to make sure that what you um, expect to be attached to people is really attached to people. Um, all of that is, is important. Now, let me just share with you one final tip today before I sign off and go catch my airplane. Um, if your family tree maker file is synced with your online tree, um, one of the features in family tree maker that you might find useful 
is that you can mark specific pieces of media private, which means that when you go to sync with your online tree, anything that you've marked private will not sync with your online tree. That means that it will just, you'll have a copy of it, it'll be attached in Family Tree Maker to the right person, however you've categorized it, but that specific piece of media will not upload and sync with your online tree. That's particularly important if you have photos of living people or children in your tree, um, where you want to have that information and you want to have it attached and organized for your own purposes, but you don't necessarily want to share that online. So it's a really simple thing when you're, again, when you're looking at any single piece of media, um, you have your media details. And in this case, the privacy checkbox is just right here under the description box. So if I check that um, and just make it private, what that means then is that when I go to sync my online tree, here um, with when I go to sync my family tree maker with my online tree, this single piece of media will not be synced online. A, a really quick visual way to see that, and I don't know if you can see this on your screen, you probably would have to make it full the video full window, but there's just it adds a little tiny lock right in the bottom left hand corner of the image. So I can just see at a glance looking at this page of media this particular piece of, of media has been marked private. Again, that's a really great way to do that if you um, want to put photos of living people in your tree or if you have some super sensitive information or documents that you've obtained in your research that maybe you don't want to put out online in your, in your public online tree. Well, that is all I have prepared for you today. It's a short and sweet presentation, but hopefully that was useful and answered some of the questions. Like I said, I, I put this together because I received quite a few questions about Family Tree Maker Media, and I wanted to make sure that um, I addressed that specifically from the standpoint of Family Tree Maker. Um, Family Tree Maker 2014 is um, getting ready to be released soon, um, but I did check with our product manager, and, and there aren't very many changes changes specifically to the media gallery, which is why we felt okay going ahead with today's presentation. Lots of other really cool changes coming with Family Tree Maker, and um, stay tuned here in the next um, few weeks to hear about some of those changes. We'll be talking about um, what some of the new features are and some of the cool new tool tools are that are available in Family Tree Maker for you to just keep doing that family history research. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.